Patients. In the UK, there are close to 5,000 deaths out of many thousands of cases that have been confirmed. Now, interestingly, even though a lot of these developed countries have thousands of ventilators, they are still complaining that that's not enough. Now, if we compare that to the situation back in Africa, then you'd realize that if we should also start hitting the the tens of thousands then we may be in trouble so question is are we going to start making our own ventilators or are we going to get some support like how jack ma was able to donate a thousand ventilators to the u.s so we'll ask him what he thinks about that as well but can you hear me now um, yeah, I can hear you. Can you okay, hear yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much for joining us on COVID-19 360 on TV3. And I hope that you are safe with your family as well. Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. What's life like being under lockdown? It's been, what, three weeks? Um, uh, just about almost three weeks. I think, uh, yeah, this week we're in the third week now. Okay. Uh, life under lockdown, well, it's, it's weird. How is it weird? What, what's different about it? Well, I mean, uh, most, most uh, what do you call it, uh, most shops are shut, um, only essential businesses are open at the moment, mm -hmm. meaning that, you know, your, your, what do you call it, clothing shops, you know, all of them are shut. No restaurants opened, um, no fast food, you know, joints open, clubs, everything is shut. How are you maintaining your sanity whilst under lockdown? Because we do understand that sometimes it could even lead to depression, staying in one spot for three straight weeks. Yeah, it is, it's, it's very true. I mean, you have to be very, uh, what do you call it, creative yourself. I mean, what I do, I try to read a little bit more. Um, fortunately for me, I still have a, one of my jobs I can work from home, so it helps. And, you know, keep in touch with friends as well and also key thing is uh, exercising because when you're saying that one of your jobs um you know is done at home that means that your pocket is not exactly affected is it oh no seriously <laughs> it is affected but um i work part-time with one of the councils and i can work from home okay so if your your budget is so that you work part-time and then you work full-time for another job yeah and full-time job is taken away definitely it eats and definitely eats into your what you call your finances okay but manage it i mean yeah uh, i know the situation is very serious in europe in the uk and in the americas as well um looking at the fact that your the british prime minister battled with it for 10 straight days and he still had to be rushed to the hospital what signal has it sent to um you know everybody in the uk well i think uh in the uk now uh, people are beginning to is beginning to sink, sink in now because initially, um, we were told that, you know, if you're younger, um, you're, you're a bit, you know, sort of immune. Not immune, but you can catch it, uh, but nothing would probably come out of it. But in the last few weeks, uh, there have been cases where, you know, 13-year-olds, 19-year-olds, mm -hmm. have actually died from, uh, what do you call it, COVID. And they didn't have any underlying health issues. Health condition, yeah. So it means that everybody's at risk. Exactly. So, watch yourself i mean it is very real and the prime minister being rushed to the hospital because the what do you call it the life cycle apparently when you get covid is mm -hmm. supposed to be between seven to ten days whereby mm -hmm. it so i think it's more of a precaution thing that they're doing that after 10 days as he's been in isolation for 10 days it should the symptoms should be kind of uh, subsiding but he still got the same symptoms he had 10 days before okay but, so he's not, he's not on a ventilator or any of that? No, he's not. It's just to check why, you know, the symptoms are still the same. Persistent, but okay, it's okay. Not, not worse or anything. It's just he's still got the same symptoms. But you are saying that it's now sinking in for a lot of you. The confirmed cases in the UK are a little above 47,000 with close to five deaths. Did it have to take this long for people to really understand what was at stake? Um, it didn't. I mean, some of us did get what it meant. But you see, because the way COVID comes out, like, you get your symptoms is just flu-like. Yeah. Now, basically, what the scientists have already said as well is that COVID has a, the percentage of you dying from COVID yeah. is lower than the percentage of people dying from the normal flu. Yeah. So taking that in. They assume, you know, it's really nothing. We can catch it and, you know, you beat it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen like that. You know, anything can happen. I mean, some people have got it and they beat it, uh, yeah. you know, like a normal malaria or flu. Mm -hmm. But you see the symptoms. Some people also would catch it 
and you don't see no symptoms. And that's the main issue. Because if you catch it and you don't know you have it, you're not showing any symptoms, yeah. easily pass it over to someone who's more vulnerable than you. And that's the main reason why there's so much, so many, uh, what do you call it, affected. And okay. so many. Let, let's bring it back home because I'm sure you've been monitoring the situation here in Ghana as well. So looking at how we're dealing with coronavirus at a point where we are recording just about 200 cases, a lot of people are saying, well, that's good, but we should be careful because the UK, the US, and all those other countries, they were at maybe 100, 200 just about two, three weeks ago. And then within two weeks, it skyrocketed to the tens of thousands. And so are we being a bit lenient with the measures that have been put in place? And are Ghanaians not understanding how severe the issue is? Yeah, because the thing with it is that every each country has got its own cycle in yeah. terms of... So, like you said, when the U.S. was at 100, they thought, you know, everything was going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Now, for the highest, uh, what do you call it, infected rate... And their numbers of their, their death toll is adding up to about 10,000 now. So it's a cycle. Everybody has got their own cycle. Ghana is probably at 204. 14, 214 now. 214 now with, what, just about five, five or six Five deaths. People. Yeah. That's a loss for us. When you say just about, that's still a loss no, for us. No, it is a loss. But what I'm trying to say is that it's a, it's, it's a cycle. So yeah. it starts gradually. Mm. Now. If you don't catch it or you don't practice social distancing and, you know, self-isolation and all of that, it spreads quicker. Yeah. Because just one person, if I'm in a room and I've got it, I might not know I have it. Mm -hmm. And then you have about 10 people there. That's it. And those 10 people can spread it. Now, the main thing, because some people look at it that, you know, they don't have any symptoms. So they probably don't have it. Yeah. And that's a Because you can't have it mm -hmm. and no any symptoms. So social isolation is the best because you keep to yourself. If you have it and you're not even showing symptoms, you can still, you know, within seven to ten days, uh, the life cycle will pass with you so you can't transmit yeah. it to someone. So that's the main reason why, you know, there's social, you know, isolation. But, yeah, I mean, I've seen some videos where Ghanaians and all of that, and it's, it's worrying because the thing with it is that when it picks up, like it's picking up now in the mm -hmm. U.K., when it picks up, because yesterday we had not shy of about 500 people dying in yeah. just one In just one day? In just one day. And when it started, it wasn't like that. When it started, you probably have about two, maybe one here, one there. Yeah. Oh, 500, almost 500 people dying in one day. And not all of them had underlying health conditions, right? Them, no, not all of them. But at the end of the day, in every country, there are population, there's a population, we have a percentage of the population who, you know, they're old, you know, yeah. they'll probably have some underlying health mm -hmm. issues. Now, that's that's what we should be worrying about, especially in Ghana. I doubt we have, you know, the equipment and all of that. We have to try and nip it in the bud before it actually gets out of hand. How do we do that? Simple. Social isolation. Keep to yourself. Social Just distancing. Okay. Okay. Social distancing, you know, when you have any kind of symptoms, because obviously... The symptoms is similar to, you know, you having malaria and cold and all of that. Yeah. Have those symptoms, self-isolate yourself until you get well. Okay. At least for days. All right. That, you don't get to, if it is what it is, if it's COVID, you don't get to part of it. All right. Way. Quentin, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. And please stay safe and keep checking I, on your Ghanaian family as well. Yeah? I, thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. So that's Quentin and he is a Ghanaian living in the UK. It's still COVID-19, 360.